Reed Timmer, how are you, my friend? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, it's so great to talk with you again. I've talked to you several times before, and uh, every time I see you on TV or on the Internet, it's always very exciting and very breathtaking with what you do. Oh, thanks for having me. There, there's a lot of driving, that's for sure. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Uh, what is the reaction uh, to most people when you come to town? Is it like, oh, my gosh, Reed Timmer is here with the Dominator. We are going to get flattened with this storm. What, what is people's reaction when they see you show up? It's definitely a combination of both. I think a lot of people are excited. They come up to the vehicles, and uh, they're like, is this one of those stolen chaser vehicles? And, uh, <laughs> and then they ask a lot of questions. What kind of gas mileage does it get? Then there's other people that are just pure panic, you know, when they see it come through town and take shelter. And I think that's the smart thing to do is if they do see our vehicles in town and there's storms or warnings in the area to take shelter and have a proactive safety plan in place. Uh, because we're basically mobile safe rooms, you know, mobile tornado shelters going down the road with instruments all over them. But we definitely get some crazy looks going down the road, and you forget that you're in something that looks like the Batmobile. <laughs> hey, it does look like the Batmobile for sure, and it's gone through a couple of different upgrades. How has it improved over the years? Well, we actually uh, launched Dominator 3, which is the, the newest one this year, and um uh, it's improved a lot since the beginning. It looked like a red shoe right off the bat, and we had a window blowout inside one tornado. Uh, so we did a lot of upgrades to that. We made it more aerodynamic. We also added Linex protective coating, which is like this Kevlar polyethylene composite um, on there to, to protect us from flying debris. And we added double Lexan windows, which is like a polycarb window, so we had the bulletproof windows as well. And we've also upgraded our instrumentation, too. We have air cannons that shoot parachute probes into the air, and our radar that can measure high-resolution wind. And that's the whole reason we built these tanks, these armored tanks, is to drive into the tornado and measure those wind speeds close to the ground because that's where the, the real complexities exist. There is one video that caught my attention with uh, you guys in, in one of your vehicles where you had softball-sized hail coming your way. It didn't look like the most pleasant experience for sure. Yeah, yeah, we, we get huge hail. I mean, it could be four, five, six inches in diameter and... Uh, saw some of the, the biggest hail I've ever seen this year, and uh, it was massive. And hail can be some of the most dangerous because I got out of the car right next to that El Reno tornado, which was 2.6 miles wide and was the widest in history, and a softball-sized hailstone came zooming by my head by, this, by, by like three inches, and I've got a big, big cranium, too, so it's a big target, so I should probably <laughs> wear a helmet. But, I mean, yeah, you get huge hail with these supercell storms as they're producing tornadoes. And, and almost every single tornado this year was very strong and um, often damaging. Uh, but some of the tornadoes we saw were in the middle of nowhere and they're a mile wide. It would just sit in one spot for an hour. We were shooting parachute probes into them and intercepting them and surrounding the tornadoes with three dominators. So uh, this season of tornado chasers will, will be like, like, like never before, that's for sure. But we saw way too much of the dark side that, that these tornadoes were behind. So on TVNweather.com, are we going to see the incident where you're running through the field and uh, Bob Dwyer takes your pants off uh, while you're running? <laughs> yeah, I was actually trying to, I was mounting a sensor probe on a barbed wire fence and it was closing in on us and had like 20 or 30 seconds to spare, and it ripped all half of my shorts off. And I had no idea. I kept chasing for 45 minutes. We're driving around this tornado and almost got in trouble on that one because the GPS said the road kept going north, but it actually ended and somebody's driveway. So we had to, to deploy the Dominator and put the spikes in there and just ride it out. But I had no idea I was missing half my shorts until, <laughs> until the chase was over. So that, that'll that be on Tornado Chasers. And it's at least 12 episodes, maybe 16, and then another six behind-the-scenes episodes in there for streaming or download. You can hook them up to your TV. And um, you can access the episodes at tvnweather.com starting September 30. That's uh, the first episode. And it's all independently produced and shot and everything. So. tvnweather.com is the website to go to September 30th with uh, Tornado Chasers. And joining us is Reed Timmer. Reed, thank you so much for stopping by South George today. Before I let you go, any predictions that you have as far as uh, what the weather is going to be like in South Georgia? Can we predict anything coming our way that we should be concerned about? Well, the, the, the hurricane season has been really inactive because there's a lot of stinking air over the Atlantic, which is a good thing uh, uh, for you guys. Um, uh, in terms of this winter, it looks like it's going to be probably a warmer than normal winter in the western U.S. and then colder uh, from the Great Lakes, the northeast, and down in the, into the southeast later on especially. So it looks like kind of a 
ridge in the west and then a trough in the east for the most part during the winter. But it, it's been crazy the last few years, so you, you, you really never know what, what, what kind of anomaly is going to happen. Read Tim or TVNweather.com is the website to go to. September 30th, uh, Tornado Chasers is the premiere. Reed, thank you for so much for stopping by. Oh, thanks for having me.